so and here's another installment for the kitchen another apron I've been asked to do one with a bib so here it is so let's have a look at the pattern pieces and how they go together so you have got as ever the lower and then you've got the upper fabric you've got the pocket facing this time you've got two waistbands and tie and the bib so first of all your upper fabric you want to fold over just as much as you need from a rest you've got and that's your first piece cut out then next you want to cut the bib and don't forget that when you get my pattern of course you'll have a proper pattern piece this is my trial first trial one so I hadn't got that drawn yet then you've got your pocket facing and look I just weigh it down with some pennies and that saves me a lot of pinning now the underneath fabric so to speak the lower fabric you want to um, fold the selvages on top of each other lengthways this time and then you've got the fabric for the underneath on the fold and you've got the two ties and the two waistbands so make sure that you've got those cut out you also need the bib but you don't need two bibs so what we are going to do is open out the fabric and then we can cut our bib as well now now we also need some strips and again you will have a pattern for those and they are for the tie that goes around the neck and for the frill which we're going to do so you need about two meters for the frill and you need about 30 to 40 centimeters for the one that goes around the neck and you also need some bias binding and so cut yourself two pieces that bias binding is going to be for the pocket and that's all the fabric I've got left if I only use a meter but if you buy a meter 20 then of course you've got a little bit more spare I'm going to sew the rougher bits together first so that they're done and then I'm going to iron the seams apart and iron it lengthways in half and when it goes to the ruffler the fabric will really push so what I'm going to do is um, secure them together with a really long stitch just go all the way to the end all your two meters that you've cut And now we're going to look at the bias binding, which is stretchy, and you also have got that um, ironed in half. Now you want to pin your facing underneath the pocket, and you attach the bias binding to the pocket facing, and obviously top, the top fabric, but you do it from what would be the wrong side and you can see here that I'm holding that uh, bias binding straight and the fabric underneath it moves and once you've done that you stitch the seam allowance back towards your apron so that gives it a really nice edge very professional actually so don't miss out on this step now that you've done that you fold over the fabric again and just so it covers your rough edge there and you stitch about one or two millimeters off the bias edge again so you can see here and um, that gives you the most beautiful finish and it's really firm as well that won't uh, stretch at all and now we can sew the pockets in completely so what we want to do is pin the pocket all the way around all the way to the top and you can get in really easily put one pin at the top just make sure that it's nice and smooth and you're going to sew that in very easy way to do a pocket actually this is so now we're going to do the tie for the bib um, that needs to be 30 40 centimeters the bib here you can as you can see is folded over and where you've got the fold you want to put a pin so that we can then put a little bit of velcro in exactly that area so you stick it on and then sew it all the way around and on the other side you're going to put your tie that you've just finished and you're going to sew it first facing down so you've got the rough edge facing upwards and then 
you turn it up again, covering that now rough edge of your tie and you sew across it again. And that finishes it off really nicely and it's quite easy. So there, put a pin in so that you can catch the tie when you sew the bit together. And we're going to now sew the top part on top of our lining. And we sew all the way around apart from obviously the lower edge stays open. That's going to be attached to the waistband. Cut your seam allowances back where you've got the curves. Turn it inside out and you've got it all ready to go. Now I've ironed it as well and I'm going to do some top stitching here. It's a triple stitch I'm using and on my sewing machine it's uh, just by turning the dial. But if you have a Genobi or a Husqvarna there's a separate stitch for it. You just have to find it and it goes backwards and forwards but it makes your stitching look really thick and embroidery and it's really lovely. So the next step then obviously is to start at the top and sew all the way down the side of the bib. And the bib is finished. First finish the waistband with a tie so that you can hang up your apron. I've been told, but where will I hang up my apron? On the other one I did, so this is where you do it. Um, and I'm going to do a little cross across there as well so it looks quite nice. And my happily ever after ribbon I've sewn through the middle as well. Now you need to put the centers on top of each other here. So you've got the top of the, wa the waistband basically sandwiching in your bib. And you just sew across it and then iron it down and that's your bib all finished. And you so it's all ironed and done. Now we just have to sew on our ties. So open out your waistband, put your tie ends right sides facing on top of each other there, pin it and then trim excess fabric if you've got some like I do here and then it's ready to go. Sew it and then iron it apart and we're ready to sew the ties together. And again, we want to not start exactly on the seam but about three centimeters over, that makes life a lot easier and you sew all the way down to the tip. And then you want to uh, cut your seam allowances back again so that you can turn it better and you get a really nice tip there. Cut the seam allowance quite close to the edge there. Turn it inside out. Turn it inside out, make sure that you work out the corner and then sort of iron it really, really well. I think that's quite important and we've got a little gap here to attach it. So now, ruffler foot, beautiful invention. It gathers the material for you so you don't have to do it. And there are enough videos out there that actually explain this really well. But this is my ruffler foot. I can only recommend you get yourself one of those. It is so, so easy. You just have to put it on instead of your foot. And um, it takes literally like a minute or two to do all those ruffles. If you haven't got a ruffler foot, you have to gather the material. That takes a little bit longer, but it's just as good. And then you sew it onto the wrong side again of the fabric, follow just the same stitch line that the ruffler foot had or the centre of your gatherers if you had just gathered it. Then you can take the pins out that you put in to secure your fabric so it can't move, cut back the seam allowance and now we're going to stitch back the seam allowance again and it's so so important because it makes it really easy to put the ribbon on so force the fabric apart with your hands and then stitch just sort of three millimeters off the edge and that's beautiful effect actually you 
can see how flat that is. Now I'm going to put my ribbon on and I just stitch that over that stitching line. I can see I just lift it over a little bit and you can see again my ribbon stays straight and um, the fabric moves around and I'm using a herringbone weave ribbon so don't try a ribbon that is a satin weave that will not go around the curve. You still have some uh, rough edges showing in places so cut those off and you need to steam that corner in and this kind of cotton herringbone weave ribbon that you can get at the haberdashers will actually steam in and it's quite easy to go around curves and uh, when you buy your sweatshirts and stuff like that you will notice from now on especially in menswear they use it a lot it's a fantastic little thing to use and it's dirt cheap that's the other thing it's about 10 p a meter so now we've done that the one of the last things we have to do is uh, sandwich in our lower apron to the waistband and we're going to start sewing it to the back first and we want to have the visible stitch line of course on the outside and that is why we're starting from the wrong side and once we've done that we just turn the whole lot over and we turn in our seam allowance which is a centimeter and pin that all the way across and then we sew once round basically starting at one of the ties and we go all the way around and I'm using this triple stitch again it takes a long time but it looks really good so don't avoid this just um, because you want to be faster and then put a needle through the tip and this is why when you get to the end most machines don't transport very well you turn that round and then you pull that thread and it's going to give you a beautiful finish especially if you've got a cheaper machine you want to do this now last last thing to do is to make sure that the tie is the right length so you can put it around your head. I'm putting it around my dummy and I have to apologize it was getting really dark and my light is not very strong in my workshop. So um, I decide where I want it to go and then I stitch this in all the way around and the velcro I'm using is the one that has got some sticky backing on it so it just sticks down and that makes it really easy to sew in because it will not move. And next I'm just going to fashion a little rosette with one of the rests I've got from the gathers. You won't need all the two meters, I think. And um, well, I didn't, I have got quite a bit left there. And then you just fix that rosette on. And over the top, you're going to put a really nice button and then close it up and your apron is done. And I think this is a really lovely one but it's not a beginner's apron if you want the beginner's apron at the end of this video there's a link to it so thank you again for watching I had much fun making this apron and I hope you do too